For years I had dreamt of hiking here, a region many have called the most beautiful mountains in the world. With striking towers of rock perfect for climbing, verdant flower-filled meadows, and picture-perfect mountain huts. Before I began, I spent a few days getting prepared in the perfect little town of Bolzano in Italy. Full of pasta and wine, I packed up my backpack and hopped on a bus to the town of Carrasa, where I headed up the chairlift and into the Rosen Garden. Welcome to the Dolomites! Are you guys ready for one hell of an adventure? This is the Rosen Garden area of the Dolomites. I have dreamed about hiking here for many years and I'm finally here to do it. I'll be hiking hut to hut and doing some via ferradas and the views are already just absolutely unbelievable. The Rosen Garden is one of the most beautiful natural areas in the Dolomites. And this is where I'd be basing my climbs for the next few days. My afternoon began by skirting the side of the mountain range through beautiful alpine meadows where I could hear the distant sound of cowbells while passing the happy footsteps of other excited hikers, all too glad to be experiencing the majesty of this mountain range. My plan that day was to go from Paulina Hut where I had disembarked the chairlift to the summit of Mazare on a series of hiking trails and on one via ferrata before descending down to my first mountain hut at Rota de Val. All right, the real adventure is about to begin. Just made a right up the mountain here, route number nine. We're heading up to our first Via Ferrata. Located in Northeast Italy, there are 2,200 named mountains in the Dolomites and hundreds of miles of trails. To say the landscape is striking is a bit of an understatement. The steep and rocky towers of rock stick up into the sky like needles and they're mesmerizing to behold. Made up of dolomite rock or dolostone, which is a type of limestone, these peaks were unlike anything I had ever seen before. I am strapped in, helmeted up, and ready for my first Via Ferrata. This is gonna take me up to the top of Mount Maseray, then we're gonna go back down the other side to where we're staying tonight at our first mountain hut. A Via Ferrata is a protected climbing route that allows non-technical climbers to ascend steep or sheer sections of mountains on a variety of cables, pegs, and ladders while using a harness and lanyards. Now, these aren't very popular in the US, but self-guided via ferratas are all over the Alps and can be done by anyone with the right equipment and experience. And I saw people of all ages, as young as eight to as old as 70 on the via ferratas here in the Dolomites. That was awesome. So beautiful. So exhilarating as well, going up that Via Frada. We're at the top now, and I'm just taking in these beautiful views over the Dolomites. And we're gonna head back down the other side of this mountain top and head down to our place for the night at our first refugio.
is Rhoda Duval, where I'll be staying tonight. Dinner's included and breakfast as well. It's so luxurious up here in the mountains of Italy. Today was wonderful, just so beautiful. Um, that way down that I took was definitely not correct, but uh, we made it, we made it here to the hut. So I'm um, excited for a couple more hours of daylight, a great dinner, and then uh, a great night's sleep as well. The hut I was staying at had a very famous mountaineer guest, Reinhold Mesner. He was actually the first climber to ascend all 14 peaks over 8,000 meters and the first person to solo ascend Mount Everest. He built many of the climbing routes in the Dolomites and spent much of his early climbing career here, ascending the various peaks. Home for the night. After a well-deserved beer, I enjoyed some relaxation and one of the most beautiful sunsets of my life. The trails in the Dolomites are super well marked but you will want what is called a tobacco map to read the route numbers as you make your way through the mountains. Good morning, everybody. It is day two here in the Dolomites. An absolutely beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Today, I'm hiking from Rota Duval, where I stayed last night, to another hut called Paso Principe. And I'm just gonna apologize now because I'm probably pronouncing all of these huts completely incorrectly, but I will have more information in the description of this video, as well as more details after this video on kind of the route I took, maps and more information if you wanna come and hike here in the Rosen Garden. So today it should be about three and a half hours of hiking. Then there's supposedly a really awesome Via Ferrata on the other side where we'll be spending the night tonight that I can do this afternoon. There are somewhere between 30 and 50 mountain passes in the Dolomites and ascending them is no joke on the thighs. The trail markers here are pretty often on the routes here. They have numbers that correspond with the tobacco maps, which is what I was looking at this morning. I'm gonna be taking route 541 today, and we've got about two and a half hours before the next hut. Leaving the flower-filled meadows and heading up my first monumental pass took me to another world entirely. The mountainside was difficult to ascend with slippery and often jagged rocks in the limestone-like material, which gave way often and reminded me of walking on loose gravel roads or volcanic ash. I'm pretty glad I have a harness right now because this trail had a ladder as well. And there's a lot of people that are gonna come and do this trail that aren't planning on doing a Via Ferrata. So just be prepared for that if you are coming to do this and aren't planning on doing your products but hiking, there's still ladders and areas where you will have to climb up things like this. That was some steep hiking this morning. <laughs> Definitely got my sore legs uh, warmed up. We are right now at the top of this pass here where we stayed last night is way behind me over there. And down here is a hut called Refugio Viole. We'll probably stop there for a snack and then continue on to the hut where I'll be staying tonight. It's so cool because, you know, every, <laughs> Every couple hours, there's a hut. So you can have breakfast at one, you can have a lunch at another, you can have a cold beer at one if you want. And there's just, just so many options here for staying and hiking and just what a unique experience. This is really one of the only places in the world, I believe, that you can do this where the huts are as close together as they are here in the Rosen Garden. So it's just such a unique and special experience to be able to be here and just, it's so luxurious having all these huts with food, 
means you can pack less in your backpack and experience more. Okay, we are now with Refugio Viole, and the menu here is extensive. It's like so many pages, tons of pasta dishes, they have a vegan menu, hot dogs, polenta, tons of stuff. You can get beer, wine, coffee, anything you want. I think I'm going to be eating a lot of pasta on this trip. Let's go. Well, this is certainly a busy place, especially at lunchtime. There's not just where I ate lunch, but also another restaurant up here as well. And it appears that a lot of people come up here, they have lunch or a picnic, and then they actually climb up there where there is a really great view point and then they probably climb back down and take the chairlift back to uh, the town that they started in. We're actually going to be going up this way. I'm not mad about not going that way because it looks really steep and uh, that's where the refuge that we're staying at tonight is. All right, round two of the day. Off we go. One of the really special parts about staying in a mountain hut is the early mornings when no one from the towns are on the trails yet and it seems like you have the entire mountain range to yourself. This is what I imagine the moon is like. Gone were the pretty colors of green and pink and purple and all I could hear was the whistling of the wind. Now the hiking here is unlike anything I've experienced in the United States. So steep and varied with ladders and cables anchored into the rocks where the land has almost but given way to cliff. It was an exciting and challenging few days here in the Dolomites and one I'm certainly not going to forget. <laughs> Just checked in here to Paso Principe right on the side of the mountain here. The Via Ferrata starts over here. First thing, first, claim a bed. I'm staying in an eight bed room tonight, so there's gonna be quite a few other people. And uh, I've gotta pick out what I'm gonna have for dinner at 6.30 because I should be back from the Via Ferrata at that time. And uh, the good menu to choose from. <laughs> All right, it's only 2 p.m., so. We're gonna spend the rest of the afternoon going up there. This is probably one of the more challenging Via Ferratas in this area. So I'm a little nervous, but uh, we're gonna be attached to cables the whole time and I've got my helmet. So I'm excited to see what it looks like up there. Well, I might already be having a case of <laughs> I think I'm braver than I am. <laughs> so this first part here, there's no cables. Um, there's a sheer drop off there. Already we're like so steep. So my nerves are just like not good right now. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I may end up going down. I consider myself a pretty brave person. I have a lot of courage, I've done a lot of scary things in my life. <laughs> but it's like the older I get, the more my life experience, I guess, <laughs> and maybe the fact that people depend on me as well factors into how afraid I get. I've been waiting here hoping somebody else was coming up and maybe gonna do the Via Prada and I could follow them, but no one's come, so I just don't know that I have the courage today <laughs> to go on the Via Frada. There's no cables in the beginning part. It looks like there actually used to be cables. I'm not sure if they were taken down, if they broke, um, or if there's supposed to be cables there. Maybe there isn't, 
um, but it certainly looks like there's supposed to be cables. My fear is that I'm going to go up 30, 40 feet, um, see that maybe there's not cables around the corner where I can't see, and then I'm going to be too afraid to go down the way that I came up because it's really steep. And uh, I've been slipping and sliding a lot on this kind of like loose gravel, so um, my confidence is not great. And I did empty my backpack. It's pretty much got nothing in it except, you know, my tripods and things attached to it. So it's not like a matter of, of weight like it was when I did Angel's Landing. It's just hard sometimes, I think, when you're by yourself to be able to push yourself in a way that you would when you're with other people. I also always err on the side of caution and try to be as safe as possible. And today I'm just not feeling it. It's also my birthday, so I think I'm just gonna go back down to the refugio and have a birthday beer. Right after I filmed that, someone came up the trail, said I could follow them, and off I went. Swallowing what I could of my rising fear as I clung to the mountain where cables no longer existed. Happy to find some courage from a stranger, I was even happier when I could clip into the cables a little way up the trail. The ascent was relatively long with many sections devoid of cables, but since there was no chance I was going down the way I went up, I looked ahead and focused on where I would grab and hold on to the rocks. Getting to the summit meant walking a narrow ridgeline with sheer drop-offs on both sides. Feeling like I was on a balance beam in the middle of the sky, I kept my gaze ahead and breathed deeply to calm my nerves. This was the scariest hike of my life. But it made getting to the top even more spectacular. At the top, this is the highest point in the Rosen Gardens. And sometimes you just need a little courage. Today that courage came from a stranger. Thank goodness, because I would not be standing up here if he hadn't come <laughs> and come and gone on the trail before me. So, but, but wow, it's stunning up here. Intense. <laughs> back on the trail now. <sighs> Heading back uphill, back to the hut. I've missed dinner as it's uh, seven, but <sighs> accomplished something I didn't think I'd be able to. So, pretty awesome. What a day, what a day indeed. That Via Ferrata was crazy. <laughs> it was really scary, uh, but we're back at the Refugio. I just had dinner and some cake, and now I'm gonna get ready for bed. Day three, good morning everybody. I am just leaving the mountain hut that I stayed in last night, Paso Principe, and I am heading actually north up towards Tierras de Alps. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, that's another mountain hut kind of on the end of the Rosen Gardens. And then I'll be kind of making my way back down into one of the Italian towns to spend the night in a hotel. I did not get much sleep last night, so I am very tired today. Uh, one of the downsides of staying in these mountain huts is that you are in rooms with a lot of other people that aren't always as considerate about making noise. Uh, the moon was also full last night, so it just did not get enough sleep. So I'm <laughs> happy to be heading kind of back to a town tonight where I can get a good night's sleep. But it is a kind of a beautiful day. It's supposed to rain in a couple of hours. So I hope we can get to a lunch spot uh, before we get wet. We are going down there and then way up the other side. 
Day three was a race against the rain. I could feel the moisture in the air and see the clouds rolling in and just hoped that I would make it to the mountain hut on the other side of the valley before the rain started to fall. The mountain pass that day was a killer. It started with a really steep descent on extremely loose and slippery rocks. At the bottom, there was some snow from one of the many glaciers in the Dolomites that have been melting rapidly over the last few years. It might be a bit hard to tell, but there's actually a big snow field right here. It blends in with the dirt as it's all kind of the same color. But since we're seeing this, I did want to mention just 10 days ago, actually 10 hikers were actually killed on a nearby mountain called Marmolata. When I was at the top of the Via Ferrata yesterday, we could see that there was actually a big glacier up there. Part of it collapsed and unfortunately killed several people, 10 people that were hiking the mountain um, over the last few years. Unfortunately, with climate change, it's just become more and more common for hikers and skiers to be killed in avalanches and glacier collapses as the temperature warms. The last two weeks before I came here were unseasonably warm in this area. And unfortunately, it's been melting a lot of this ice and snow. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, walking on this absolutely sucks. It's slippery and loose and ugly as well. The crap part about going downhill is that eventually you have to go back up. Oof. Third of the way up. A little bit more to go. That was an absolutely intense hike. Super steep up that super slippery scree field. I actually met a couple last night from the United States as well who came down this yesterday and then back up to the refuge where I stayed last night. And this was their like least favorite hike just because it is so steep, it is so slippery. I definitely wish I had rented some trekking poles, but the guy at the mountaineering store where I actually rented my harness was like, Oh, you know, you're fine. You don't have knee problems. You don't need trekking poles. And I, uh, definitely regretting that after hiking up and down all these big mountain passes, but it should be a little bit easier now. There's about 30 minutes until the ne next refuge. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for coffee. Last mountain pass here and even more stunning, we're back in the grasslands here in the meadows. There's a beautiful green on both sides. Just absolutely stunning and busy as well. Holy wildflowers. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Just every color you can imagine.
Here we are in the lift again, heading back down to the town here, a different town that I started in, and I will be taking the bus back to Bolzano. What an adventure. Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me on this little adventure in the Dolomites. I haven't done one of these follow-ups to one of my trips in a while and there was a lot of planning that went into this trip so I definitely wanted to share some more of the backstory of this trip and also some questions that you might have if this is something that you want to do. Now the Dolomites are, as I said in this video, one of the world's most beautiful mountain ranges. A lot of people go here for summer hiking, especially European people. I don't know that it's super popular for Americans yet, but it definitely should be because it's just really cool to be able to hike hut to hut, um, <laughs> have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at different places. It really makes the hiking a lot more luxurious. Um, you're able to have a glass of wine or beer at the end of the day, um, eat really well, and usually get well rested. However, that was not the case for me um, on my second night in the Dolomites. Now, I actually planned on doing about four nights in the Rosen Garden area of the Dolomites, which is where I was hiking, and kind of cut it short because I just was really tired. I did a lot of hiking each day. <laughs> if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you know that I'm not exactly a leisurely person. Um, I also went on this trip solo, so I didn't have people to kind of like hang out with during the day or just pass the time sitting around. So when I was there, I was just like full throttle each day hiking and doing those via ferratas as you saw. But I also in the planning process had a little bit of confusion as to where I should go, how far I should go and that kind of thing as it was a little bit difficult to plan from here in the United States not knowing the area or having a lot of information about the hiking trail. So that's what I wanted to get into right now and show you kind of what I used to plan this trip. So I actually used Google Earth to kind of map everything out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to just zoom out here so you can see the world here. And so I actually came from Finland when I came down here. So I was up here in the Arctic region of Finland in the north. I actually flew into Munich. So I went down here. I flew into Munich. From Munich, I actually took one of the German trains right into the town of Bolzano. Let me see if I can get this Google Earth to zoom in here for us. So I started in the town of Bolzano and uh, guys, <laughs> as far as Italian towns go, wow. This place blew me away. It just had these like picture perfect little streets that were pedestrian only. There was gelato in every corner. The restaurants were phenomenal. I tried a new one every single night. Uh, I stayed at a fantastic hotel that was right across the street from the train station, so it could not have been easier to get around. The first thing I did when I got to Bolzano was actually go to one of the climbing stores, and from there I actually rented uh, a harness with the Via Ferrata lanyards and a helmet. Um, I have a rock climbing harness at home, but it does not have the specific lanyards that you should have when you're doing a Via Ferrata. So it was super easy to just grab one at the rental shop and bring that with me for the week of exploring I did in the Dolomites. So that's where I started in this cute little town. After a day of rest, I hopped on the bus, which was actually just four euros, I believe. And I headed over to Caressa, which is where I hopped on the chairlift and took that up to Refugio Paulino Hut. Now, this is a really popular area that a lot of tourists come and they just day hike and they might come into the mountains and just hike on some of these exterior trails that are on the bottom side of the mountain. So on day one, why we'll just explain also. So a lot of people will hike, if you guys can see this exterior of the trail here, 
that goes around the outside of the mountain and can take you right here, which is where I ended up staying. That is not what I did. I actually did the opposite. I'm gonna go back over here and show you guys more. Let me zoom out a little as well. So I took this trail that went along the outside of this side of the mountain. And up this steep part here and up here to the Via Ferrata Rota de Val. After that, I descended this back side of the mountain and ended up at my hut for the first night. And as you saw there, I just had this incredible sunset there. Uh, the staff there were fantastic and the owner was great. Another thing about the huts is that they're actually really inexpensive. You might be surprised that I don't think there are any that are more than 70 euros and that's on the high side. Some of them are gonna be around 30 euros. It's not like booking a hotel on Expedia though. Pretty much all of these huts, you have to actually call them or send them an email to make a reservation. So logistically it can be a little bit challenging because a lot of these places book out really far in advance and if you can find a reservation at one, you may not be able to find a reservation at the ones that you want. So you do have to do some kind of experimenting and laying things out on a map to figure out, okay, well, if that one's not available, where could I go instead? Luckily, there's so many huts to stay at. There are, as I said in the video, you know, a hut almost every two hours. So it makes it pretty easy to find other options, but Keep that in mind if you are trying to plan a Dolomite trip um, as well. And then um, that next day, I hiked really far <laughs> over to here, Paso Principe. Now, as you guys saw, that was like a really big map move. So I'll try to zoom out a little so you can see that a little bit better. So I started down here at the bottom of the map at Rotwundhut, which is Rota de Val, and I hiked all the way up to this top point here, and then did this little star here, which is Catenaccio de Entremoy, that uh, pretty challenging Via Ferrata that I did. So that was a long hike, but I had stopped for lunch in between, actually um, over here. And then that next day, I hiked all the way out to here, and then followed this ridge line back to one of the towns and then returned to Bolzano. So a lot of moving around, but yeah, so that was night two. And then that was day three and I had coffee there. If you wanna do a Dolomites trip, I highly recommend it. There's so many different ways to go. There are actually a ton of different mountain ranges within the Dolomites as well. So you can choose from so many different places. It's not just the Rosen Garden, although from the research that I did, this was the one that appealed to me most. So as you can see, there are so many mountain ranges here to choose from in this Northern area of Italy. And I recommend just looking at different people's blogs. And also if you want to have someone plan this for you, you can contact a tour operator as well and they can kind of help you do some of that planning. For me, as you guys know, I like to kind of figure out my own stuff and don't always wanna be kind of like weighed down by being in a tour group. So I did do all of this myself, I went by myself and I actually read a blog called In a Faraway Land. She really did a good job outlining where she had done some of these Via Ferratas and gave reviews of not only some of the hiking trails, but some of the Via Ferratas as well. Um, if you can get your hands on one, you'll want a tobacco map. These are actually numbered by mountain range area. So you'll want to know that before you pick up one of the maps as well. One of the other things I really loved about this trip was just how easy it was to get around Italy and even just the mountain areas. It's, it's crazy that you can pretty much hike out of these mountain ranges 
in any direction at any time and get to a town or get to a chairlift and head down into a town and hop on a bus to get back to one of the larger cities or towns. It's such a beautiful area and unlike America where if you're <laughs> hiking in a mountain range it could be days before you see a person let alone public transportation. Um, even on my bus ride back from where I ended my trip the bus driver for some reason let everyone get on for free so it didn't cost me anything to get back to Bolzano. The most expensive things of this trip were definitely the train travel which was only about a hundred euros per direction um, depending on the class of fare that you take that can be a little bit less expensive or a little bit more expensive as well if you are going to be taking the train just be really cognizant about your luggage as well as it can be kind of difficult to finagle the the areas of the train with a lot of bags uh, Bolzano as I said was a really beautiful place lots of options for hotels after I got done hiking, I actually just went back to Bolzano. I spent about four or five days just enjoying more pizza and pasta and just having some rest after kind of the last couple of weeks, which involved obviously traveling in Finland and then traveling in the Dolomites as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's other questions that you have as far as maybe visiting the Dolomites or trying to plan a trip like this, definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know if I can help out in any way. There are lots of tour operators that specifically help out with hut to hut hiking. They will also porter your gear. You don't have to be a super experienced hiker. You don't have to do the Via Ferratas. If you wanna just go and hike kind of on the outskirts of the mountain, hitting all those meadows, going through Europe's largest alpine meadow, which was where I ended my hike, you can actually do that with a lot of these service providers as well and they're they'll take your majority of your luggage from like hotel to hotel and you can just take the chairlift up you can hike for a couple of hours have lunch at one of the mountain huts and then hike down to a different hotel in a different area of the alps so that's one way to do it or you can do what i did and just spend a couple of days deep in the mountain ranges and go hut to hut but thank you guys all, as always for watching for supporting this channel and just being here and sharing in my adventure so i really appreciate it i've got lots more stuff coming out and i'm planning the next couple of adventures as well so thanks again hope you enjoyed as always i'm alice ford never stop exploring i'll see you in the next one bye